people deluded i'm back again good morning good afternoon good evening and in some cases good night now kirio has been linked with a move away from arsenal apparently there's an update where osman pedro neto uh chido obi martin and a bunch of players indirectly concerned with arsenal so yeah as usual smash the like button get the creative juices flowing and let me know your thoughts throughout this if you give me 30 seconds or less that's what she said you know i can share my screen let me not be an idiot people apologies man uh where Osman's concerned now, it's a bit boring. The Zesco thing didn't work out. The Ivan Tony rumors were quashed. You know, Zertsky was still linked with him, but it appears that AC Milan and uh, Manchester United appear to be stronger in that race. So it feels like everything's gone full circle. We're still linked with Jokerez. We're still linked with Osman. We all know the backdrop of Osman. He's got a massive release clause. Napoli are notoriously difficult to do business with. And Chelsea, Paris Saint Germain, and Arsenal have all been linked with moves, but nobody's come forward quickly at this moment in time to put offers. And Allegedly, Napoli are now willing to evaluate any offers of 100 million euros for Victor Osman, a figure well below his current release clause. There are no concrete offers on the table, but Osman dreams of playing in the Premier League. So again, the calm before the storm, it appears like it's a game of poker. You know, other clubs are waiting to see exactly what Napoli do and if that price drops and if they're open to negotiations. Now, if they're willing to accept a package rising to 100 million euros, and I'm, that's probably about 80, the back end of 80, 90 odd million, then maybe in theory Arsenal could be enticed to get involved but at this moment in time it doesn't seem that's the case but you know if there is a price drop that's news to our ears people you know apparently he's got 150 million euro release clause and I must admit some reports say 100 some say 105 112 to 115 as high as 120 to 150 so it seems like there's a lot of gamesmanship being played people um, and that's where the article came in relation to the 25 year old Nigerian and a Napoli striker Chelsea have been also been interested they seem to have moved away. We know Napoli have a new manager in Conte and getting rid of Osman could potentially help them, you know, reshape their squad. He has had interest from Saudi Arabia and you never know what's going to happen, but it appears that he's reluctant to do such. Allegedly, Mikel Arteta wants to sign Mikel Moreno no, no matter what this summer and has already called the player to convey the big plans he has for him. Moreno is seduced by a potential move while Real Sociedad feel all roles lead to a transfer of around 25 million euros. Apparently, he's got a year left on his deal, so it ends in 20. 25 so this is a crucial summer for them to obviously sell this guy he's played in the Premier League before not really known for his time at Newcastle but he's been at Newcastle obviously Sociedad and Borussia Dortmund I mean it's a midfielder I love that if we had to have been looking at Zuba Mendy we had to have obviously seen him play football do I think he's a world breaker game changing player of course not but that does you don't have to be that as long as he's competent confident in his abilities and consistent and it's obviously there's an air of durability you know in terms of staying fit I'm all for that and if Mikel Arteta believes this is the man let's give him an opportunity but again and TC bids plays and things of that ilk we need to be wary but it seems like Mikel Moreno is the midfield target for Arsenal we've had the Zuba Mendes the Kimmiches you know uh, there's plenty of midfielders oh Nana will be here all day if we talk about everyone who Arsenal have been linked with uh, again apparently Arteta really wants to sign him for Arsenal no matter what he's already called him to discuss the possibility of moving to the Emirates he did spend the 17-18 season at Newcastle United and he would be presented with an opportunity to join us so it could be a good cut price move someone that could be part of the squad someone that can bring something to the table without necessarily breaking the bank and of course we want stars we want showmans you know we want statements kind of what we saw with Declan Rice but if we just sign competent players and they do the job if you can sign them for a pound 25 million quid or obviously exaggeration 250 million quid get these things done just make sure for me anyways when next season comes the midfield is sorted because I think we need a striker in the winger central midfield there's more questions than answers in a positive way how good can Declan Rice be will he be an eight or a six how good can Odegaard get but then there's a whole big fan of what Jorginho does big fan of Thomas Partey you probably can't bet on them over a 38 game period Fabio Vieira and Emil Smith-Rowe more so Emil Smith-Rowe but Fabio Vieira both of them have been linked with moves away and they haven't exactly been given consistent chances in that eight role but they've probably not convinced Mikel Arteta that that's them so there's a lot of players we haven't really got that and if you look in our defence you know with the Tim Kirill's been linked with a move away but generally Kirill Timber Saliba, Benjamin White, Gabriel, anybody I've missed out. You know, Raya's quite young for a goalie. Yes, we'd all want a striker, but you've, you know, on paper, whether they're here or not, you've, you know, Trossard's the only exception to the rule. He's 29, but you've got Gabriel Jesus, you've got Saka, you've got Martinelli, you've got a bunch of players that have longevity in midfield, bar the exception of our captain Odegaard and Declan Rice, our recent addition last summer. There's more questions than answers. And 
you know, games are won and lost in the defensive and attacking third, but it's played in the middle. And, you know, generally being second two years in a row, we've been doing that. But how much better would we be if we locked down that eight, you know, that left side in midfield, whether that's Declan Rice playing over there and you get a six or it's a six to go with Declan Rice people. Um, and to be honest, I think it's one central midfielder this summer and then the next one next summer. And then we might have, you know, Declan Rice, a backup six at eight, obviously Odegaard and a couple other different sort of things we could do. You know, technically Odegaard can play in the left-hand role. Fabio Vieira and Smith Rowe can as well. I don't want to see it, but Kai Havertz also as well. Whether they convince or not, they are options, people. Speaking of options, Joshua Kimmich apparently has five clubs. He would he'd be open to joining if and when he does depart by Munich. He's contracted until 2025. It's well known, you know, that all cards are on the table. Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Real Madrid and Barcelona have all been named dropped there, people. Apparently, Juventus have called their interest in Ricardo Calafuri. I mean, the Bologna defender would do, you know, work, work wonders in Arsenal's squad to have that throughout a 38-game calendar in the Premier League be great. Why that has relevance is not because I like the player and obviously he's enhancing his reputation during the Euros, forget the own goal, but this is saying apparently Thiago Motta is turning his attentions to Jacob Kirio in which, you know, Kirio, since he signed for us, he has struggled for real first-team football and moves to Italy have not gone away. Been linked with Napoli, been linked with Juventus, been linked with a cup, AC Milan, Roma, a couple of clubs in Italy. Now, Kirio, I wouldn't sell him until we bring in another defensive option. I actually would move with Kirio for next season, but I do feel when you look beyond the Smith Rose, the Reese Nelsons, the Enketias, probably Aaron Ramsdale, you know, Tavares, Tini, even with his injury, Lokonga, they're the ones that Arsenal probably want to get out the door. Then I think you move that slightly on to the Kirios, the Gabriel Zeus's, the Zinchenko's, you know, potentially top, well, Thomas Partey as well. Players that I don't think Edu and Mikel Arteta will actively push out. But if offers are, are, are forthcoming for Arsenal, I think there'll be a decision to make. And I do think, you know, some more than others, I don't think the club for these players, you know, have been more interested in what other clubs have to say than in previous years. So I think they have, I would define Kirio in that bunch of for the right price. And it's up to Kirio because, yes, you can play left but you're probably not the inverted fullback Mikel Arteta wants. So that probably puts Tommy Asu Timber ahead of you. We're still linked with a left back. Whether we rate Zinchenko or not, he's probably ahead of him in the pecking order. Left sided centre half, you know, we, we haven't got much depth there, but Kirill, sorry, Tommy Asu and and Timber, in addition to Kirill, can play there. Um, and you you hope Gabriel doesn't leave or gets injured. But if if our two main centre half stay fit, you're probably not going to get football. So he's got a sweet gig. He's playing for Arsenal. You know, towards the turn of the new year that we've recently, you know, obviously gone into 2024, he did get some opportunities. But you never quite feel Kirill really has a chance to be a regular, regular first team, or at least based on this evidence, we'd love to wake up and he looks like the Polish Puyol because it's great competition for Saliba, Gabriel and Cole people. So we'll have to see. And I guess it's down for Kirill really. But you'd imagine you wouldn't let Kirill go until we bring a defender in. This has no relevance to us per se, but we was linked with uh, Fiorentina's Kayonde. Apparently Aston Villa are moving for the 19-year-old fullback. So another one bites the dust. For so Romano has been speaking and the only relevance is the last line. Apparently Bayern Munich are still pushing for Chido Obi Martin. He also has a new deal proposal from Arsenal Football Club people. So we'll have to see what's going on there. Allegedly, we're making a medical assessment of Neto before placing a transfer bid. Now it's easy to link us with Pedro Neto. I don't know Mikel Arteta or Edu or anyone, but I would say it's fair to say there's concrete evidence to suggest that we are have an interest in him and that what I mean by that is not putting bids down and saying we're going to sign him but you know you look at when David Ornstein spoken about him we've tried to get him a few years ago so I do think there's a level of admiration internally at the Emirates but where you think of Pedro Neto for as great as he is injuries and you know with Arsenal tax, you see Tini, you see Tommy Asu, you see Zinchenko, you see Thomas Partey, you've seen what Gabriel Jesus has had to go go through since the World Cup do we want to see this guy on the football pitch or do we want him to make friends with the medical staff? That would be the only thing that would put me off. Check out the video I did on Pedro Neto. But allegedly, Arsenal will undertake a medical assessment of Pedro Neto before deciding whether to make a push for the Wolves attacker. When is that going to happen? Is it going to happen during the Euros to which you need permission from Wolves? And I imagine Wolves are not going to give no permission until personal terms are agreed, bids are made, bids are accepted. I don't know if Pedro Neto even wants to consider his club football when you're participating in the Euros. Good impact off the bench in not the game against Turkey, but the game before that. Um, so we'll have to see. And I mean, medical assessment, I'm not sure how far that goes, but apparently he's been on our radar for some time and he's massively admired by Mikel Arteta. Apparently we were told by Wolves in January they wouldn't sell him for less than 80 million, 
But now that valuation is 43 million, according to sources close to the gunners. I mean, 43 million odd quid, provided he doesn't give any more additional medical concerns. I'm all for that. He could be a great option on the left, could be a great competition slash deputy for Bukayo Saka. Obviously, I don't want to see it, but he can play as a false nine. And I've said before, I don't personally feel, you know, we can not sign a striker and not sign a winger. I think, you know, ideally you would have got a striker and a winger. If you've got a striker and no winger, all right, we can move. If you don't get a striker and a winger, we can move forward with that. But I think we need another attacker, really and truly. And crucially, if Mikel Arteta does admire him, he knows where he is now, what he could be in the medium, and what he could be long-term for this football club. 43 million, I'm on that. I don't know if Wolves will let him go for that. But again, if you're going to buy Pedro Neto for all his ability, you're going to sit there and go to Wolves. The man can't stay fit. I think if he stayed fit, he would have been in with a shout for PFA Team of the Year. He started last season uh, in, in great form. Apparently, However, his injury history has made the Gunners cautious about pursuing a deal without a thorough data assessment. And now Arteta is awaiting the latest reports on Neto to determine his fitness and long-term viability. I don't know why I'm about to say that it's got no relevance, but I'm sure when Mikel Arteta signed for Arsenal, we actually didn't have a medical. I wonder if he'll cut that same courtesy now he's a manager. Uh, if the Portugal international is deemed fit, Arsenal could accelerate their efforts to secure his signature. It's thought, though, that his addition would bring dynamism to Mikel Arteta's attacking options, potentially complementing the likes of Bakayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. On the other hand, if Neto's medical update raises concerns, Arsenal will look to alternative targets and we've been linked with Nico Williams consistently, people. You'd imagine that Pedro Neto would be slightly more affordable. I mean, their release clause, what, you got 43 million for him, 50-odd for Nico Williams, not too much in there. But it's well known, Nico Williams is on some handsome wages at Bilbao, which I don't care. If you want the best, you have to get the best. But you'd imagine Pedro Neto would see an uplift in his wages, but it probably wouldn't be anything near that Williams is on right now or what he would get if he did sign for Arsenal. But this is all hypotheticals because bids haven't been placed. I mean, we all knew he wasn't signing Bruno Gomares, much less for 100-odd million quid, but apparently the 100 million clause in his release Release clause in his contract. Apologies, people. Is due to expire tonight at eleven fifty nine. So if they do an art, do have a change of heart. They have to get a move on in that regards. People, we're still being linked with Victor Yokarez. We've gone over that. Some reports say it's, it's said Chile done. I believe it when I see it. You know, Yokarez and, and Neto would be great. Um, apparently, you know, we're in negotiations for a seventy seven point five fee pay million pounds. Sorry, fee paid over twenty four months. People, uh, Sporting won't settle on any longer terms, and we all know about his impressive strike rate. People. People. I mean, I don't know if we're going to go for uh, Jokerez, but who knows in this life, people. Skipping back over here, shout out to Carl Hein, apparently our third choice goalkeeper, Estonian international, the Estonian number one, has signed a new long-term deal with Arsenal people. You'd imagine he goes out on loan. You're not going to get, well, you're nowhere near Aaron Ramsdale at this moment, his future subject to speculation. You're nowhere near David Raya. You'd imagine we'd have to bring in a backup goalie or number two as well. Probably need a, a, a third choice keeper unless an academy guy can make up the difference in that regards. Um, you'd imagine he signs a New Deal heads out on loan people. If I'm honest, he's been starved of football. You need to go and play senior men's football and be outside your comfort zone. So we'll have to see. What uh finally, you know what? This probably be my final time on Williams until there's something of significance. Signing Nico Williams will cost 58 million euros up front and taxes, which will take the entire package over 60 million euros. The player is already on a huge salary at Athletic Club, so it will require a huge income to convince him. I mean, that isn't anything groundbreaking per se, but, you know, if you want the best, you have to pay for and pay the best the money they deserve. So with that being said, people, let me know your thoughts and everything we've discussed. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Peace.